Did you know, for example, 32% of women believe it's possible to communicate with the dead? So don't bother trying to kill yourself, she'll still be rabbiting on. <laughs> In the UK, trousers cause twice as many accidents as chainsaws, which is true. I've had a lot of accidents in my trousers. <laughs> a female mackerel lays 500,000 eggs at any one time. Slag. <laughs> and 9% of cat owners claim their cat had a say in their choice of partner. And that choice of partner was not to have one. <laughs> Let's get started. <laughs> Top household convenience drivers would like in their car. How about replacing the electric windows with sash windows? <laughs> yes. <laughs> nice. And having a window box on the bonnet. Yeah, it'd be nice, wouldn't it? <laughs> Lots of nice flowers. Yeah, yeah, grow your own. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like um, using your mobiles illegal. What about a landline? <laughs> that is <thinking. laughs> An ejector seat like the one I've got in my bedroom. <laughs> You've got an ejector seat in the bedroom? Oh, yeah, I'd say it'll yes. be very nice, but off you go. <laughs> <laughs> but I reckon a fridge. That's the right answer. Fridge. That's basically what an ice cream van is, though. That is an ice cream van, yeah. you're saying it, what am I saying it? Yes, the top household convenience drivers would like in their car is a fridge. You can get a car with a fridge and a TV and a sink. It's called a caravan, and if you buy one, he'll blow it up. <laughs> OK, next one. Biggest cause of anger in Britain. I tell you what winds me up. Oh, it makes me absolutely... <laughs> you know when it's a windy day and it's raining and your umbrella ends up going like that? <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> uh, is it badly organised anger management classes? <laughs> Biggest cause of anger in Britain. Is it the ratio of steak to kidney in most steak and kidney pies? Yeah. Very rarely do they get it right. <laughs> you always go, oh, that's too kidneyish. Or, or, or you go, where's the kidney? I didn't buy a steak pie. And then the wind picks up and your umbrella goes, and you go, <laughs> what a day! <laughs> okay, so a biggest cause of anger in Britain. Um, is it when you're uh, in a supermarket and you've bought loads of shopping and the woman says, do you want some bags? And you're like, what? You know, I've got clown's trousers, I'll just whack it in my pocket. <laughs> it's a very British thing. Queuing. People jumping the queue. Oh, I know. Correct. Oh, no, it's that. <laughs> <laughs> That's the biggest... Yes, the biggest cause of anger in Britain is Jesus. queue jumping. Here's a tip. If you're in the supermarket and there's a massive queue and you've only got a few items, Get to the back, no one cares. <laughs> what are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. We've teamed up with the leading polling organisation and they've asked the British nation what stories they've been discussing this week. It's our panellist's job to guess the British public's top five most popular talking points. Jason's team... <laughs> you're to guess first. Um, what do you think people might have been talking about this week? It's, um... <laughs> The untimely death of uh, Molly Sugden. <laughs> <laughs> Who saw that coming? Jimmy, Who else Jimmy, is Jimmy, yeah. Jimmy, 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 Jimmy. Is it? Shh, um... Jimmy, Jimmy. <laughs> he had his choice. He had his chance. <laughs> yes, David Watt. <laughs> Have you heard Michael Jackson is dead? <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> I, I, I heard. People have been talking about it because he's a controversial figure. I mean, if it's wrong to share your bed with 13-year-old boys, <laughs> then lock me up and throw away the key. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought the coverage, like, the night he died on Thursday, was it Thursday when yeah, it happened? Yeah, Thursday, yeah. I mean, I just... I sat there all night just flipping channels between BBC, Sky News, just trying to see how many different ways you can say Michael Jackson is dead. <laughs> there was this lady on BBC News, and, um... She said, Michael Jackson, King of Pop, dead at 50. We go back live to Los Angeles for an update. He dead! <laughs> he still dead! Uh, the saddest thing is about 10 minutes after his death, you get about 100 text messages from people you've not... You've not even seen them for 15 years. And you're like, who's sat there at half past one in the morning thinking, I've not seen Jason for 12 years, I might send him a gag about a dead celebrity 12 minutes ago. <laughs> people say things like, he's, he's entrusted his kids. Well, apparently they're not really his kids. Oh, He's not the biological yeah, father. Yeah. Which actually wasn't difficult to work out. They look like they're related to the Swedish royal family. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know their names? Prince Michael. 
Um, One, two and three. No. <laughs> what are your children called? I'm not going to tell you my names of my children. Why not? I don't, I don't want you freaking them out as well. <laughs> <laughs> Poking your head over the fence going, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sad about it? Uh, for me, it's a little bit like when Diana dies. I couldn't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it, the audience, how do you feel? Are you good at... Do you feel sad? No, no. no it's a weird one. That, a few of you, yes. Now, now, I read in the paper, the big story, the real tragedy around Michael Jackson's death was the fact you were looking for a house and you lost out on the deposit. <laughs> Yeah, there's, there's an element of truth in that, yeah. So, did you find him a house? Uh, well, um, he was actually found three houses. And, and, and this is perhaps why I'm a little bit of a conspiracy theorist. Oh, yeah. Um, is he living in one? Because... <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> he was due to sign the aid. He was due to choose one of the houses this week. Mm. So, what was he looking for? Was it a flat? Um, Fairground, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Has it got an ensuite? Has it got a waltzer? <laughs> well, what was he looking for? He needed a what was essentially a stately home, but it needed to have all the mod cons of a gym and a cinema and a panic room and that sort of thing. But I think what's quite interesting is they were going to have a state funeral. People could go and see his, his coffin. What they're going to do instead, instead of a state funeral, they're just going to dangle him out of a window for 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Let's have a look and see whether Michael Jackson is one of the most talked about things this week. I imagine he's right up there. Yes, indeed. I think the highest percentage we've ever had. Yes, Michael Jackson has passed away. You could tell Michael Jackson wasn't well. He hasn't looked himself since about 1984. <laughs> Jason, what else have the nation been talking about? It's been hot. Really hot. Apart from in uh, where I live, where it's not been. <laughs> I'm from Manchester. It's been hot. Where have you been? Yeah, but you're in, like, cold places a lot of the time. You, everything's hot to you. You know what I mean? <laughs> You're like, oh, that was a cold spot. You're like, no, it wasn't. I'm just live in Manchester. Oh, I'm getting something here. Ooh. <laughs> Any thoughts on the weather, Bridge? Yeah, it's hot. Um, probably ain't gonna be hot all that long. Um, <laughs> it, and if it stays as hot as it is, you're gonna have Spanish people coming over here to have sex. So. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't there some um, government news system, an alert system? There to is warn now us an official alert. Yeah. What a load of old yeah. rubbish, sorry. As opposed to what you do. <laughs> I mean. I think the press could be more imaginative with where they cover the hot weather. They always have the same thing. They always have, like, some girls in a bikini near a beach, and then behind them they've, like, got a graphic of a sun with the temperature saying 32 degrees, whatever. <laughs> I suppose in about 40 years' time, that little sun will have 48 degrees on it, and on the beach, it'll just be full of dead people. <laughs> Let's have a look and see whether the hot weather is one of the most talked about things this week. <laughs> yes, it's been really hot this week. The pavements in London were hot enough to fry an egg. Yeah, I'll have mine dog shied up. <laughs> Sean, what else have the nation been talking about this week? Uh, the, the Queen wants more money. She said that uh, she wants an increase in the civil list because she hasn't got enough money. And um, they've said no, they're not going to give her any more money. What's the point in having a Queen if she got to ask somebody else for money? Surely, if you're the Queen, you go and you get the money yourself. Like, ah, oh, look at this treasure chest of gold in the castle. <laughs> I ain't got to ask nobody for nothing. It's, it's no good asking me, I don't understand it. She's on the money. <laughs> All she's got to do is take a picture of herself and write 20 pounds on it. That's it's done. <laughs> That's money. <laughs> well, she could get sponsorship. She goes, hello, I'm the Queen, brought to you by Powergen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wearing a crown because I'm worth it. <laughs> Can I ask, who's, who's met the Queen? Who's actually met the Queen? <laughs> Me. Oh, everybody! <laughs> You've not met the Queen! Yeah. When? We went to meet the Queen, I went to Buckingham Palace, I had tea with the Queen. Well, I'll ring her up later well, and ask did you her. Meet <laughs> I have, I have. You have not met I the have. Queen! Every Don't Tuesday, lie. every Tuesday, I give her trampolining lessons. <laughs> <laughs> she can do. You think sometimes, I'm... just to wind Prince Charles up, when he walks in, she pretends to be dead? <laughs> He goes, yeah! She goes, ah! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Reg, 
French. Have you ever learned any other languages? Sometimes I've made up words in another language. <laughs> There's a French word I made up, um, Jean Teflu. Um, what does Jean Teflu mean? It means whatever. <laughs> so, like, if someone says, uh, you're in a restaurant and a French person says, um, do you want red or white wine? You go, Jean Teflu. <laughs> When I say it, the French people, you know, it gets, catches them off guard. You know, they don't, they feel like it's a French word they don't know. <laughs> and then they feel embarrassed because I'm not French, yet I know it. <laughs> and then I say, well, maybe you ain't really French then, man. Best way to get the attention of someone you fancy. Break into their car and strap yourself into one of the kids' seats. Like <laughs> <laughs> when they come in, you go, all right. Can you look after me? Move your hands, because I can't get close to the mother, can I? You put your hands there. Do you don't right. need to, that's their answer. When I try to get attention to somebody mm -hmm. I fancy, I probably do the thing uh, British people don't know about. I talk to them. <laughs> But, I mean, I don't expect y'all to know too much about that. <laughs> <laughs> Not on the list. Really. <laughs> what do you think? How would you get the attention? Show me tits. <laughs> Show me tits isn't, isn't there, but you know what? That is going to work. <laughs> Build a fun fair in your garden. <laughs> it's our panellist's job to guess the British public's top five most talked about things this week. Sean. What do you think the nation should be talking about? The Apprentice. The Apprentice. The Apprentice. Okay. It was the final of The Apprentice, and Sir Alan Sugar may decided finally to give someone a job I know he's in not... his empire, <laughs> which I don't think is an empire. I think it's like a Greek island. I think he does everything. <laughs> I think you go into his offices. He's dressed in a in a wig, and he goes, "Oh, Mr. Sugar, I'll see you now." And he <laughs> goes on with. <laughs> <laughs> Runs into the boardroom, sits there, is going, come in, sit down, tea or coffee? They go, tea, and he goes, hold on a sec, and he goes, no, no, Because I've never come across any kind of uh, Amstrad or Sugar Enterprises in any part of Have you not got life. a Faxophone 3000? <laughs> no. The Faxophone 3000 they use, it's brilliant. It's like a MIDI hi-fi system with a fax. It's like someone sellotapes a sort of flask to a banjo or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> me, how, how he is so rich when, what is Amstrad? I mean, I had an Amstrad... CPC 464 when I was 12. Is that the one with the green writing? The green screen yes. and it loaded games off tapes. That was the system. And he's now a millionaire. He must own actual sugar. <laughs> James, do you think the right person won? Yes, I think Yasmina was right to win, yeah. The prize on this, Yasmina's prize, uh, she won a, a job at a digital signage firm. Yeah, now, I, I don't know much about digital signage, but is it that? <laughs> <laughs> he is selling digital telly things with stuff on. Wow. You'd be good in that job, because you know all the lingo. That's right, you? yeah. <laughs> Why didn't he pick Kate? Did Kate lose because she's got a Birmingham accent? Because that's why I would have said no. <laughs> I work with Richard Hammond. When he's had a drink, he becomes fully Birmingham, and it's just intolerable noise. <laughs> Does Sir Alan make you call him Sir Alan? No-one actually tells you that. You do it, it's like... It might not be his real name, just... Well, why didn't you call him... <laughs> <laughs> And I just find it all too fascinating, The Apprentice, because as far as that work out, all you actually do in there is spend 10% of your time doing something and then 90% working out who to blame when it goes wrong. That's it, you have to kind of... I mean, Alan Sorry. Sugar, you know, if you notice this, Alan Sugar, how cross he gets, cos one team's made eight quid and the other team's lost by 25 pence. <laughs> but is it like that? And then what's that, Margaret? She's Let now... him speak! <laughs> <laughs> It's like, it's like talking to an eight-year-old, isn't it? Come on, is it like that? Why? Let him speak. Why does he get so cross about 25p? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, why? Why? Because he's... Yeah, why does he get so cross? God almighty! <laughs> Answer! He hasn't made 800-odd million through... You know, look after the, the pennies and the 800 millions look after themselves. <laughs> it's that kind of homespun wisdom that lost you the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> You know one thing I've picked up actually from watching it on the telly? I've just realised how bad my posture is. It's like I'm a prawn, like a jumbo prawn. <laughs> <laughs> That's the main thing you've learned from that experience. <laughs> but you 
are massive. I'm, I'm, I mean, how big, think... how big are you, James? <laughs> how big are you? <laughs> We're after. There's a lot of big boys on that team. I want to know who's the biggest. <laughs> let's get you and Clarkson back to back. Come on, let's get you back to back. <laughs> well, let's see it. We're not going to get that response. Oh, James, 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 James he back just, to back. He just said. Just, just don't, don't argue with me. <laughs> <laughs> they are back to pinchy. back, back to back. <laughs> James Why is bigger. Well, James is bigger. Yes. Let's have a look and see whether The Apprentice is one of the most talked about things this week. Of course. <laughs> yes, it was the final of The Apprentice. I don't pretend to know much about business, but after watching Yasmina and Kate carefully analysing their business decisions and leadership qualities, I simply can't understand why Sir Alan didn't hire the pretty one. <laughs> Sir Alan's been asked to sign on as the government's enterprise czar. James has been asked to sign on. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Jason, Holly and David Wallace of The Nation be talking about. Well, it's got to be the... Uh, European elections, European elections isn't it? yeah. It's got to be the European elections, isn't it, Jimmy? No, it's just the BNP going over there taking all their jobs. It's, uh, yeah. it's pretty simple. <laughs> <laughs> Someone threw an egg at him, didn't it? Was it, a, was it a British hen that laid the egg, do we know? It or? was a brown egg that was thrown, and that's what hurt. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't understand why the BNP even want to be, you, you know, in the European Parliament, because they're always going to be sat next to foreigners, aren't they, all the time? <laughs> you know? Unless that might cure them. So they go over there and go, actually, it's quite nice, and the people are really friendly. Oh, what's that? Oh, cross on. I'm no longer a racist. <laughs> <laughs> There's no difference to UKIP. All UKIP have got is, we don't like Europe. Yeah. So people who vote for them vote for UKIP. They say, oh, we don't like Europe. But it's kind of pointless, you keep going there, because they don't like Europe. It's a bit like going to someone's birthday party who you hate, <laughs> refusing to sing happy birthday, eating all the cake and then going, this is a sh**. <laughs> <laughs> then did you see the size of the voting paper for it? Yeah, it was long, yeah, it, was, it? was like yeah, a yeah. piece of bog roll. It was stretched all the way across the floor. I just crossed all of them out and just put Hamas. <laughs> 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 They'll <laughs> sort this borough out. <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's have a look and see whether the European elections is one of the most talked about things this week. Yes, of course. <laughs> yes, the European election results were out this week. The BNP has complained of media bias, which is fair enough. You're not even allowed to describe the BNP leader on television till after the watershed, and even then they sometimes bleep the word c <laughs> <laughs> Sean, Jeremy and James, what else have the nation been talking about this week? Is it uh, Gordon Ramsay's been uh, making friends in Australia? <laughs> well, he was actually being told off by the Australian Prime Minister, wasn't he? He was called yeah. the lowest form of life. Because he called uh, a TV presenter a pig. He said she was a pig-faced woman. And I thought it's quite ironic, him calling someone a pig, when his face looks like crackling. <laughs> <isn't it>? <laughs> <laughs> like burnt crackling. One of the things she said was uh, that he called her... Um, a lesbian pig, and he's gone. I never called her a lesbian. And he's been... <laughs> <laughs> this is the picture that he that he put up. <laughs> and it, in fairness to him, she does look a little bit like a pig in that. Yeah. <laughs> She's probably got a recipe that said, while the zoo is reducing, <laughs> you can Photoshop a woman to look like a six-titted pig. <laughs> if so, you did an interview. You've done lots of interviews, haven't you, Jeremy? Yeah. You've never thought the next day, thinking, I know what I'm going to do, I'm going to mock them up looking like a six-titted pig. <laughs> Even if you've thought about it, you haven't bothered to do it. <laughs> I sort of feel a bit sorry for Gordon. When the Daily Mail demands an apology, you know, we didn't demand an apology, so he then goes on the television, which he did, and said, I'm very sorry, and now then, we demand more! They called his apology snivelling. Yes, yeah, snivelling So they went, apology. they demanded an apology, he apologised, and then they went, snivelling apology. Yeah. <laughs> Well, he they can't want, win, then, can what he? What they want you to do is stand outside the Daily Mail offices with a cheese grater just rubbing your face <laughs> off. <and> that... <laughs> I think you'll find Gordon Ramsay's already done yeah. that. Have you not seen the effect? Yeah. <laughs> but that's what I mean. How can he go around and uh, deliver, you know, insults about how people look? He makes Ronnie Wood look like Hannah Montana, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> when he shuts his eyes, it's like someone's put a chef's hat on a walnut. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I can tell you, it's not one of the most talked about things this week. This is the story that Gordon Ramsay has insulted an Australian TV presenter. The general rule is, when you're accused of being insensitive towards women by an Australian, 
you've got problems. <laughs> American research has suggested that all Englishmen are oppressed and uptight. When I read that, I was angry and upset. But I managed to hide it. <laughs> there is a stereotype that suggests the most common crime in Wales is sheep shagging. Not the case. It's actually ram raiding. <laughs> Newcastle is the only major city in the UK without a red light district. And I'll tell you why. No need. And if you're watching in Norfolk, hello. I'm not being patronising, I just thought I'd show you what a normal hand looks like. <laughs> Let's get started. <laughs> Fingers on buzzers. Cowell, we haven't said Cowell properly, have we? Simon Cowell in The Greatest yeah. Britain. Yeah. He was voted 33 in The Worst Britons and yeah. his first 20 were serial killers. <laughs> Times have changed. You know, Britain's Got Talent is to, supposed to show us that any talentless dick can make it big, and he's, a, he's an ambassador for that, isn't he? <laughs> well, let's have a look and see whether Simon Cowell is one of the greatest living Britons. No way. God, he is. <clears throat> yeah. Simon Cowell was voted the fifth greatest living Briton. Through his television work, Cowell has amassed a £200 million fortune. Throw in the profits from Leon Jackson's album, and he's never short of change, either. <laughs> Simon Cowell spends £500,000 every year on his own personal security. Half a million pounds on personal security. That is an incredible amount of money. Has Simon not considered being less of a <laughs> We've got one more person to get fingers on buzzers. Oh, go on. I'm going to go for the guy Banksy. Do you know the graffiti artist? It can't be Banksy, though, can it? Cos he's not British. Cos Banksy, everyone knows, is Rolf Harris. <laughs> <laughs> It's Rolf. It's Rolf having a bit of fun. He shouldn't be on it, cos going around painting stuff on walls, some of the stuff he's done, he's done some really cruel, practical jokes. So like, on the West Bank, painting a, painting a ladder up the wall, he's taking the piss, isn't he? That's like, that's like when Terry Waite was handcuffed to a radiator, sneaking in in the night and painting a little key just out of his reach. <laughs> so he I can tell you that Banksy was not in the top five, but he was on the longer list. I personally prefer art that makes you think. Would a Labrador really try and bluff a Spaniel with a pair of threes? <laughs> So 66% of Londoners think their city is a good place to what? Meet the other 34%. <laughs> You're sort of, sort of on the right line, sir. It's to do with meeting someone special. A good Meet place to fall in love. Yeah, I'll give you that. Yeah. Get good. out. 66% of Londoners think their city is a good place to find love. The last relationship I had, I ruined by blurting out, I love you too early, which gave away the fact I was hiding behind the curtains. <laughs> Most desirable place to live in the UK. Tontree. <laughs> Cown. <laughs> I'd like to live next to a landfill site, <clears throat> right? Because when you finish your dinner, you can just well, go to your back garden and just scrape it <laughs> <laughs> over the fence into the landfill. <laughs> Is it Alton Towers? That's a good How answer. Would that be? Just before all the all the queues got there, you could go on Rita as many. Well, that's a ride, isn't it? But you know all the. <laughs> I'm going to say, and this isn't because I do the adverts on television, I'm entirely impartial, but I'm going to say Wales. No. <laughs> no. No, it isn't. <laughs> Northampton, Medal of England. <laughs> I think it's either Cheddar, Wensleydale, or Stilton. But not Leicester, don't like that. <laughs> no flavour. Is it Cornwall? Yeah, Cornwall. Cornwall is the right answer. They got it first. <laughs> yes, the most desirable place to live in the UK is Cornwall. Getting to Cornwall is easy. Straight down the M4, then the M5, then it's the A roads, then bam! Six hours later, you're nearly there. <laughs> it's the Temp series now, and I, I've always been a fan of Big Brother, but there's been a few points where I think even the voiceover bloke sounds like he's getting a bit bored. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, one day I just want to turn it on and go, dear whatever it is in a Big Brother house, yeah. one of them has said something, it's upset the other one, but the other ones don't care. <laughs> Here's the thing, I, Davina, brilliant. The house, brilliant. Who's your favourite housemate? Well, then, then the, the problem, problem is, the problem. then they fill the nice, lovely house with a cool sofa and the, ooh, you can come over here and make a smoothie with twat. Are you <laughs> Sorry, Shree is not a twat. No. Shree is amazing. He's obsessed by this girl. He's, he's obsessed by Noreen. He's, Noreen. he's in the same house as her, 
as he's obsessed by it, so it's coming really handy. It's yeah. a stalker's paradise. <laughs> <It is. laughs> Was he stalking her before before the show? I mean, that's incredibly lucky. Yeah. If, you're, if you're stalking someone and you both end up in the Big Brother house. <laughs> there is some great bits in it, like when they were doing that um, dancing flower thing, Siavash said, Oh, I wish we had a camera. <laughs> <laughs> What gets me is that Big Brother, they, like, every year, it's like they're trying... They're, they're trying to put, you know, wackier, weirder people in every year to make it more controversial. And I think that the only way... You know, it's only going to end up, you know, we're going to have, like, a killer. <laughs> <laughs> but no, not, not, like, not like an active killer, like someone who yeah. was a killer. <laughs> 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 I heard that it's part of the unemployment figures, yeah. isn't it? The, the job centre and stuff are, are saying there's too many people applying for too fewer jobs, basically. Yeah, well, there's, I mean, this is part of the biggest story. There are over two million people unemployed in Britain. Yeah. But it's also, the, there's some statistic. I think McDonald's have turned down loads of people, but are still managing to employ, explain this to me, 140 people per day. Yes, they, they, McDonald's receive 2,200 job applications every day. McDonald's could easily employ loads more people by employing somebody to go on the second window at the drive through Yes. There's nobody ever on that oh, second yeah. window. <laughs> First window, you pay your money. The last window, you collect the food. Why is there a second window? <laughs> I always want to see Ronald McDonald's on his fag break, just since the Saturday night. Right, mate. See that colonel? Tell him he's a prick. <laughs> 52% of people would be willing to give a full body massage to their best friend, true or false? It depends who your best friend is, doesn't it? If your yeah, best friend's. I think, yes, you know. if your best friend goes, oh, I'm so achy. Who's your best friend? <laughs> Jordi, who's your best friend? Vicky. And if she was very achy and she lied down, took her clothes off. Yeah. Oh, bring out the oils. <laughs> oh, I haven't even thought of oils. Well done. <laughs> it definitely wouldn't let a friend do acupuncture on me. <laughs> The mistake with the full body, and you only make it once, is when they say, get undressed, and you do. They don't actually mean... They do. mean keep your boxers on. They actually <laughs> mean... They don't say it, but... And I, th I would yeah. say to anyone going for one, make sure you leave your boxers on, because if, if you're supposed to take them off, that's less embarrassing than if you're supposed to leave them on, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Somebody walks in and goes, oh, you're supposed to take them off. You go, all right, what am I like? <laughs> if you've got them off, they go, uh, security. <laughs> so... <laughs> OK, so what are you going to go for, true or false? It depends how many men were asked, of I course, but I true. think it's... You think true? I think, I think it could be true, to be honest. You both yeah. think true. I'm going to... I think I'm going to overrule and do say it. false. But you're the captain. You're the captain. I never... I very rarely do it, guys, do but it. I'm doing it this time. OK, well, I can false. tell you the answer is true. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 52% of people would be willing to give a full-body massage to their best friend. Unlucky Jason. My best friend gave me a full body massage, and the only thing weird about it is the fact that my best friend is a transsexual Estonian hooker working out of a hotel in Gatwick. <laughs> Sean, Josie, and Jamelia, what do you like the look of? Birmingham's got to be. And it better not be anything bad. It's not, no, it's nothing bad about Birmingham. Well, what's going to happen if it is? What are you going to do? I'm going to beat him. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to attack him. Let's pick Birmingham and hope it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> Birmingham is a <laughs> hole. Why? <laughs> No, it's You've chosen Birmingham. OK. 25% of people from the Midlands have used what to seduce someone? <laughs> well, it's not their accent, no, is it's, it? It's probably the others. I've used that how sexy Midlands on. twang. How can you say that? What do you, how do you think people seduce? Seduce? How would you seduce someone? Would you wear, like, some sort of cerise boob tube? <laughs> <laughs> Sold. <laughs> You're such an idiot. <laughs> Yeah, it's all very funny, but you don't have to live with this sexual tension. <laughs> in Birmingham, everyone, like, smiles at each other and they say hello, even what? if you don't know each other. You're painting in... Birmingham to be something that it really isn't. Oh, God, <laughs> it is! It you really... You like Venice. <laughs> no, I swear, I suppose, people do, like, smile at each other, but then when I first came to London, I did that and they were kind of, like, looking at me like I was a weirdo. I, was like, I had oh. the same thing, Jamelia, actually, coming down from the north. I remember getting to Euston yeah. and uh, there was a fellow reading... I think it was Da Vinci Code at the time. It was before it, you know, kicked off into the big success. And yeah. I sort of wandered over and I said, oh, is it any good, that? I've been, fan I've been fancy reading. He looked at me like I went, hey, mate, can I have a little tickle of your bollocks? <laughs> <Is> that... <laughs> Top thing we learn from our dads. It's mostly sayings. My dad, you know, I think that's what most people learn from their dads. Very, like, you know, you say, you can't make an omelette, very pessimistic man, my dad. Mm. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> um, how to read. My dad taught me how to read by reading Benji the Squirrel. You can't oh. read. I... <laughs> Only just. Only just. Benji the Squirrel. What's Benji on? the Squirrel. Well, prove it. What happens in the end? OK. Well, he gets the nut. <laughs> Is it not, no matter what time I get up, it'll always be afternoon? Like, you, you, no matter what time, you'll always be after your dad, it'll be like, after, afternoon, son. Yeah. Afternoon. Like, Isn't it six o'clock in the morning? Yeah, it's, like, it's, half, it's half eight, dad. Afternoon, afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> I've only been to the shop, got the papers. I remember when I was about, you know, you're about 12 or 13, friends are very important to you. And my, you know, my dad had four kids or whatever. I remember thinking, you never see his friends? Because he's just busy, he's working busy. I, I said to him, Dad, where, where are all your friends? He said, well, they're doing exactly the same as me. He said, they're sitting down after a hard day's work, having a whiskey and answering stupid questions. <laughs> <laughs> Top thing we learned from my dad. I think it's quite an obvious one. Go on, have a... Is it DIY? Correct, the right answer. <laughs> Yes, the top thing we learned from our dads is DIY. Every Sunday morning, you could hear my dad banging away in vain, trying to coax some life out of the old boiler. And then he'd give up, go upstairs and fuck my mum. <laughs> Women's dream way to be proposed to. I think girls like to be proposed to in, uh, in bed. No, ah. In bed? After I just apologise and try and move on. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think almost during. During? Hello. Wow. Really? I haven't got time. <laughs> um, is it on Trisha? <laughs> That's my dream that way. That would then be. Because you can ask for a DNA test straight away. <laughs> and you can ask for, like, a lie detector and all that. But if you're proposing to someone, a DNA test would be to find out whether they're the same species. <laughs> <laughs> is it outside Yates's? <laughs> and, you're, and, you're, and you're holding her hair as she's having a little bit of a sip. <laughs> Again, there's, some, there's some places there's in some Manchester where if you did that, you'd be quite the David Niven. <laughs> I, <would say. laughs> I didn't take any risks when I proposed. Uh. I put a, a note up the cat's ass. <laughs> <laughs> and when it went into the kitchen, I thought she'd go, what's that in the cat's ass? <laughs> <laughs> Will you marry? It's a bit smudged here. <laughs> I like the way that my husband proposed to me. Like he he proposed in front of people. I would I would I honestly think I probably would have said no if it was just like me and him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna actually try and answer this question. I'm yeah, just thinking on. like girly girls, probably like on bended knee at the top of the Eiffel Tower. I'll give you that for the Paris because women's dream way to be proposed to is actually on a romantic holiday. Aww. 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 I thought it would be romantic to take my girlfriend back to where we first met, but she said, Don't make me go back there, Mr Jimmy. I cook, I clean, I'll be back. I agree with you, Kelly. I'm impressed that my mum can even turn on a computer, and I think that's the way mum should be. What are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. We've teamed up with a leading polling organisation, and they've asked the British nation what stories they've been discussing this week. It's our panellists' job to guess the British public's top five most popular talking points. Jason. Well, it's got to be Michael Jackson's funeral, hasn't it? What, sorry? Is he dead? <laughs> Did you watch it? Oh, I caught the last half hour. I thought it was quite nice. I mean, everyone's been slagging it off, saying it was a bit, you know, a bit cheesy and that, but if you could have Stevie Wonder singing at your funeral, you'd have him, wouldn't you? I mean, you'd rather it was your 40th, but, you know, you'd have him, <laughs> wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> the weirdest thing was all the fans. There was, like, millions of fans dressed up like Michael Jackson. Now, can you imagine being at your nana's funeral, right? <laughs> <laughs> Just coming out and everyone's dressed like her. Like... <laughs> the thing that I love is how people forget about the bad stuff with the kids. Oh, yeah! yeah. yeah. Oh, about that. He was nice, though. He did really good music. It's like, <laughs> when anyone dies, that's always what happens. Like, this man murdered 20 prostitutes. Ah, oh, but he was good at macrame. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest with you, I think when glitter goes, people will remember the bad stuff. <laughs> Kelly, did you watch it? I thought the whole thing was a bit much, to be honest. I mean, all of his brothers wearing the glove. Do you notice the detail of that? Because they clearly bought five... I know! Someone told me this. I thought it was so funny. Instead of buying each one of them a right or a left-handed <laughs> glove, they bought, like, six pairs and split them between 12. So some of them had them on the left hand and some of them had them on the right. <laughs> the weirdest thing I read is that they're going to put him in a concrete tomb so crazed fans can't dig him up. Who is doing that? Seriously. <laughs> Who is that much of a fan? Like, hey, love, I know we missed out on tickets for the memorial service. <laughs> Come in the lounge. 
No, but won't his face, his face not decompose because it's plastic? I don't think it will. I think it'll stay pretty much as is. Yeah, he's like he's like a bag of nappies. I mean, the weird thing about it is it's not really the funeral, is it? It's like a sort of pre-funeral. It's like he's engaged to be dead. <laughs> In a way, he said, well, we're dead, we're preparing for his deadness, but his deadness hasn't happened yet. We haven't got the full deadness, because his funeral's <laughs> going to go on for ages. People are going to be making jokes about his funeral for about two or three months. It's like the death that just keeps on giving. <laughs> Reg, did you watch it? I came in about halfway through, and uh, first half hour, I thought it was about like a, some kind of music competition. And, uh, <laughs> Were you voting at home? Yeah, Going, okay. Wow, it's a concert, man. I started watching it, and then they flashed on the coffin, and I'm like, oh, Michael Jackson dead. <laughs> what if you expect Simon Cow to press a button and go, eh, <laughs> yeah, Well, I love that Shaheen. He was on it, wasn't he? He was going to play with Michael Jackson uh, at the yeah. at the Ocean. <laughs> <laughs> Which Actually, everything you say turns into some innuendo. As you watch it, you could play the Michael Jackson double entendre drinking game. Yeah. Every time somebody went, he touched so many people. Whee! <laughs> I'm just saying for, like, for Shaheen, I think playing with Michael Jackson for 50 dates, that would have stretched him. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever met him? You uh -huh, kind of... twice. You met him twice? First time I met him was at um, an MTV after party. And then the second time, it was at Madison Square Gardens. And he was wheeling around Elizabeth Taylor with his pants unbuttoned and no shoes on. It was the weirdest thing I've ever seen in my life. The weirdest thing you've ever seen? Yeah. <laughs> But you know what? Now that Mike's dead, a lot of stories like this are gonna pop out. You know, just, just weird stuff that people just, nobody listen to, but it's just okay to say now because he's gone. You're gonna hear stories like, I was eating a hot dog one time and he jumped out the TV. And just, <laughs> just, it was the damnedest thing. It was Michael Jackson. And I'm like, Mike, what you doing here? And he's like, hee hee. And he back. <laughs> But there's also a thing about his saying he'd be singing in heaven with the angels. And I was thinking, if he gets into heaven, we're all going. Oh, my God. And I bet you, I bet you if he is going, the angels will be running around telling the cherubs to put some clothes on. <laughs> I want you wearing dungarees and duffel coats, minimum. <laughs> Let's have a look and see whether Michael Jackson is one of the most talked about things this week. Of course it is. Yes. <laughs> yes, Michael Jackson's funeral took place this week. 12-year-old Britain's Got Talent finalist Shaheen Jaffa Goli performed at Jackson's funeral. He raised the roof of the Staples Centre and the lid of the coffin. <laughs> Cool. What else have people been talking about this week? MI6. Is it MI5? I don't know. MI6. MI6 is foreign uh, intelligence. MI5 is home. MI4 is like parks and waterways. <laughs> <laughs> and MI3 is clamping. <laughs> Which one does furniture? MFI. <laughs> <laughs> the head of MI6 has been put on uh, one of those Facebooks. Facebook. His wife has put him on Facebook. And generally, people think that's not great that people know what the head of MI6 looks like in his, in his trunks. It's very funny <laughs> because he's playing football on a beach like this. He's going, You can't see my legs, but it's very funny. <laughs> <laughs> and I bet he was thinking, I wish my wife would put that other photo on where I'm going like this. <laughs> <laughs> Someone said, some expert as well said, that the Taliban get 80% of their information from social networking yeah. sites like Facebook and Twitter. Really? Really? Yeah. <laughs> Ahmed, do that quickly. quickly. Osama, <laughs> Stephen Fry is having another bagel for breakfast. <laughs> 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 but also, where's the harm? I mean, it's only holiday pictures. You know, what's she going to do? Like, oh, yeah, as you're flicking through, well, that's the one of us in the seashells. That was one we went down to Devon. That's the one of uh, the inside of a nuclear submarine. Don't <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it's mostly for him, because, obviously, it's embarrassed, but now he has to kill her. <laughs> <laughs> She'll just be hanging out of the wash, you go... Ooh. Oh. <laughs> what the hell is a woman of her age doing on Facebook when she's married anyway? I agree with you, Kelly. I'm impressed that my mum can even turn on a computer, and I think that's the way mum should be. <laughs> Last night, my mum said to me, get this working for me, and she handed me her computer, and I said, mum, you press power. So I leave the room and I come back and she's still looking at it, trying to figure out how to turn it on. Do you think whatever your dad's got is catching? <laughs> That's not the 
just a mum thing. My brother, he's only 25. I, I caught him once. It, the computer was there. He was trying to type some stuff up, and he said, uh, I need to print it out. And it wasn't printing out. And I was going, oh, it'll work itself out. Just connect it. And I left. I come back 10 minutes later, and he had the, the monitor of the thing looking at the... the he turned it round to face... <laughs> to face the printer going, but he has got paper! <laughs> Let's have a look and see if it's up there. Yes, this is the story. The head of MI6 has had personal details published on Facebook. Of course, the Russians are years behind in their technology. They're still using Friends Reunited. <laughs> the MI6 chief has been seen in a couple of embarrassing photos, one wearing a pair of Speedos and another attaching electrodes to the testicles of an Iranian dissident. <laughs> Went to school in Glasgow, the highlight of the day was eating junk food at lunchtime. And I was always the kind of fat guy that would bring in a note to PE, like, please excuse Kevin from volleyball. He's <laughs> off to Greg's. So... <laughs> sure. Patrick, Kevin, you ought to go first. Who's the greatest living Briton? Susan Boyle. <laughs> People give Susan Boyle a hard time, but I think she's a good-looking fella. I, I think she is. <laughs> they're, doing a they're doing a film of her life as well. Are they? Yeah, and I thought, how interesting is that? The first 40 years is just her feeding cats. <laughs> I think she'd be a perfect replacement for Michael Jackson at the O2. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, honestly, because now that, you know, Michael Jackson's cancelled, they've renamed the O2... He they... cancelled. <laughs> he cancelled. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. He didn't no. phone up, just for a second. No. <laughs> Turn away. <laughs> I've just about to die. I don't think I can do this. <laughs> I can tell you, Susan Ball, the public didn't vote for her. No, but... Have, have another guess. Tim Berners-Lee, the guy who created the internet. If you invented the internet, it must be rubbish. There's no websites are out. Well, there's nothing to do on it. It's not even got cinema listings. There's or... nothing to do on the website. <laughs> not when you're the first person. It's like the, the bloke who invented the phone for the first time. Like, you know, Alexander Graham Bell. Who did he ring? How did he know it worked? <laughs> Surely, if you invent something, you can always invent another one to go with it. What, he invented two? I think he invented two phones at the same go. Yeah. So... <laughs> so, Jason... Hello, hello, it's me, hello! It's <laughs> engaged, you idiot. <laughs> I can tell you, Tim Berners-Lee not voted in the, in the top 50 Britons. Oh. On the computer yeah. theme, I just found out Stephen Hawking is British. I never knew that until last week. I could never, never place the accent, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> I read that he went to Stringfellows. He likes Stringfellows. In 2003, Hawking reportedly visited Stringfellows. That must be weird if you're in the booth next to him. And you can, in the next one, you can just hear, play with your boobies. <laughs> and your eyes are like the cosmos. <laughs> I think he's the perfect go bloke to go for a pint with, though. WKD for me and a WD-40 for him. It's perfect. <laughs> Do you know what I would really like to see him on? I'd really like to see him on Mastermind, cos he's so bright. Mastermind? Have you not seen Robot Wars? He'd kill on that. <laughs> no! <laughs> well, let's have a look and see whether Stephen Hawking is up there. There he is. <laughs> Yes! Stephen Hawking was voted the greatest living Britain by the British public. Hawking's A Brief History of Time is a hugely successful book. Over 200 million people in 100 different countries have now read the first two pages. <laughs> Perhaps his two most famous quotes are, the total energy of the universe is exactly zero, and, warning, vehicle reversing. <laughs> right, other great living Britons, Jason's team. It's got to be somebody else who, who is revered, like David Beckham. For example, because he's one of those people who I always I always put together with Stephen Hawkins. I always think because no, because everyone has a good, look, you're like you're giggling already because he's like the, everyone goes oh he's stupid isn't he David Beckham you're like well that's not what he's famous for he's <coughs> famous for being brilliant at football nobody goes oh Stephen Hawkins he might be clever but I'd piss on him in a race you know what I mean? So, <laughs> yeah, he's I don't think science. Stephen Hawking would sell as many underpants as David Beckham would he? <laughs> And the other thing about David Beckham is he always advertises foreign stuff, doesn't he? He always advertises, like, police sunglasses, dosing a bun. Why doesn't he do, like, Aunt Bessie's Yorkshire puddings? <laughs> <laughs> These are lovely. It's, about, it's a bit like my Michael Jackson voice. <laughs> <laughs> These are Yorkshire puddings. You just take them out of the freezer and... Uh... Shaman! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I like seeing proper fat blokes with Beckham on the back of their England shirt. And then I like to run after him down the street going, David! <coughs> David! <laughs> Can I get you? Oh, sorry, mate. Sorry, I thought you were the real one. <laughs> he used to be a, a lovely-looking chap. He's got too many tattoos, doesn't he? Look, he look, he's going to need a contents page if he carries on like this. <laughs> Presumably, they're all to remind him of the things he's not supposed to forget. He's got his son's names 
somewhere on his back or something. He's got, he's got forever by my side on his arm. <laughs> it's presumably to remind him where to keep that. <laughs> oh, well, I can tell you, David Beckham is not in the top five. Oh. Great greatness. Oh. Yeah. There you go. Beckham recently branded a journalist a sado. What kind of Wally says sado? Div. <laughs> When he resigned as England captain, Beckham broke down in tears as he realised he'd have to spend more time with her. <laughs> Another guest from Shortstein. Jamie, Jamie Oliver, is he there? Because uh, he's good work for the schools. See, I, I feel sorry because when I went to school in Glasgow, the highlight of the day was eating junk food at lunchtime. And I was always the kind of fat guy that would bring in a note to PE, like, please excuse Kevin from volleyball, he's <laughs> off to Greg's. So... <laughs> What I'm saying is the guy's effort is pretty commendable, whether you like yes, it or not. Yeah, no, I think right. so. I got really upset with those, as a mother, with those mums that went and fed fish and chips to their kids through the school oh, gate. Yeah. In, yeah, in, in mm. sort of, uh, what's the word? Through Rebellion. The uh, photo opportunity. Because it's like, yeah, well... <laughs> my kid's gonna die of obesity by the time he's 14. That'll learn that, Jamie Oliver. <laughs> But it is weird, because I've read like, people were saying, oh, he's only doing it to become famous. <laughs> like, if that's a byproduct of doing something nice and good, then so be it, you know what I mean? If the, if the bloke who invents the cure for cancer wants to name the cure after himself, no one's going to go, big headed prick. <laughs> <laughs> mumps. Do you know who discovered the mumps? No. Who? No. Have a guess. Do Dr. Mumps? No. It was actually discovered by Dr. Gonorrhea. <laughs> but he was saving his name to something a bit more serious. <laughs> I can't waste my name on a little red lump. <laughs> Something that rots the cock. <laughs> I can tell you, Jamie Oliver is not in the top five. Ooh. Over the years, Jamie has helped popularise certain phrases, like pucker, lovely jubbly, mm. and is there anything else on? <laughs> guess another guess, greatest living Britain. Is, is, is Thatcher on there? Thatcher, Thatcher, milk snatcher. She's, which I think she got off remarkably lightly for. It's like having a go at Hitler for making the moustache a little less fashionable, isn't it? <laughs> it's like saying, Hitler, Hitler, now we can't have moustaches that are littler, that is. <laughs> but I bet she's on there, that odious old toad. I remember when I was a kid, we weren't allowed um, that soft, whippy ice cream because she invented it, apparently. Margaret Thatcher <laughs> invented... <laughs> you got the same Margaret Thatcher? Uh, I'm telling you, her and uh, Dr Whippy... Uh, they got together and she invented soft whippy ice cream. She was she was part of the, the team that, that discovered this, that. Was this before she was foreign secretary? That is real. That is real. Have a look. Google How it when you get all well, That woman's not in. That woman's not in. And she's not mental. <laughs> Same thing happened in our house. We weren't at Christmas. We weren't allowed tinsel because Robert Mugabe invented tinsel. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. But she was voted in three times, so a lot of people back in the day oh, must, no. have, must have liked her. People say that, oh, she had to do what she did, and that's why you've got to admire her for that, cos she had to do what she did. Not. A dog's colon has to extract water from its faeces before it pushes it out through its anus, but I'm not going to buy a commemorative plate for that, either. Let's have a look and see whether Margaret Thatcher was one of the be. greatest no. living Britons. She's oh, bound to be. No. She's bound Surely to be. Surely not. No! <laughs> Incredibly, yes, the British public voted Thatcher the fourth greatest living Briton. Thatcher recently broke her arm in what doctors describe as a good start. <laughs> Thatcher says she doesn't want her funeral to be a morbid affair, she wants it to be a celebration. Well, you won't be disappointed, love. It'll be like Mardi Gras. There'll be a conga. <laughs> A doner kebab pot noodle contains 22% of the recommended daily calorie intake of a recently divorced man. <laughs> An octopus has three hearts. Perhaps that's why they're so clingy. <laughs> it takes just two days for a T-bone steak to dissolve in a can of Coke, and I'm pretty sure that is how they make Dr Pepper. <laughs> and your mouth produces 1.8 pints of saliva every day, or half as much as Cheryl Cole's yoga instructor. <laughs> Let's get started. <laughs> what are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. We've teamed up with a leading polling organisation and they've asked the British nation what stories they've been discussing this week. It's our panellist's job to guess the British public's top five most popular talking points. Jason. Well, it's got to be Michael Jackson's funeral, hasn't it? What, sorry? Is he dead? <laughs> Did you watch it? Oh, I caught the last half hour. I thought it was quite nice. I mean, everyone's been slagging it off, saying it was a bit, you know, a bit cheesy and that, but if you could have Stevie Wonder singing at your funeral, 
you'd have him, wouldn't you? I mean, you'd rather it was your 40th, but, you know, you'd have him, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> the weirdest thing was all the fans. There was, like, millions of fans dressed up like Michael Jackson. Now, can you imagine being at your Nana's funeral, right? <laughs> <laughs> Coming out and everyone's dressed like her, you're like... <laughs> <laughs> the thing that I love is how people forget about the bad stuff with the kids. Oh, yeah! Yeah! yeah. Oh, about that. He was nice, though, he did really good music. <laughs> it's like, when anyone dies, that's always what happens. Like, this man murdered 20 prostitutes. Ah, oh, but he was good at macrame. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest with you, I think when glitter goes, people will remember the bad stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly, did you watch it? I thought the whole thing was a bit much, to be honest. I mean, all of his brothers wearing the glove. Do you notice the detail of that? Because they clearly bought five... I know! Someone told me this. I thought it was so funny. Instead of buying each one of them a right or a left-handed <laughs> glove, they bought, like, six pairs and split them between 12. So some of them had them on the left hand and some of them <laughs> had them on the... <laughs> Reg, did you watch it? I came in about halfway through, and, uh, first half hour, I thought it was about, like, a, some kind of music competition. And, uh... <laughs> Were you voting at home? Yeah, Going okay. to... Wow, it's a concert, man! I started watching it, and then they flashed on the coffin, and I was like, oh, Michael Jackson, dead. <laughs> what if you expect Simon Cow to press a button and go, eh, <laughs> yeah, Well, I love that Shaheen. He was on it, wasn't he? He was going to play with Michael Jackson uh, at the, yeah. the Ocean. <laughs> Let's have a look and see whether Michael Jackson's one of the most talked about things this week. Of course it is. Yes. Yes, Michael Jackson's funeral took place this week. 12-year-old Britain's Got Talent finalist Shaheen Jaffa Goli performed at Jackson's funeral. He raised the roof of the Staples Centre and the lid of the coffin. <laughs> I think it's that they make you feel old. I mean, I, you know, yeah. like, ten years ago, I'd have gone in and I'd look round to see if there was any, you know, nice-looking girls to have a chat to. Now, I'll go in and i look around to see if there's anywhere to sit. <laughs> It's so loud that you're shouting, and then the mu the, so suddenly in some of the songs there's just a silent bit, <laughs> and then you, know, you end up going, I've, I've never killed since! Just really <laughs> loud. I mean, I worked in that for years, and one of the weird things is when I, I've had guys come round to me, they, they say, I'm serious, a guy come up to me, and this is the worst Sorry. one, it's when they go, Are you that twat, Terry Christian? And you just don't know what the right answer is, do you? Yeah, yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Yes, I am that twat. Terry Christian would be <laughs> the correct answer. Turned up at some singing do. Yes. <laughs> Threw on some water. Tried to snog a cock. <laughs> Let's have a look and see what we've been talking about over the last few months. Is it Big Brother? It's the Temp series now, and I, I've always been a fan of Big Brother, but there's been a few points where I think even the voiceover bloke sounds like he's getting a bit bored. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I, one day I just want to turn it on him and go, dear whatever it is in a Big Brother house, yeah. one of them has said something that's upset the other one, but the other ones don't care. <laughs> I, Davina, brilliant. The house, brilliant. Who's your favourite housemate? Well, then, the, the problem, problem is... The problem. Then they fill the nice, lovely house with the cool sofa and the, ooh, you can come over here and make a smoothie with twats. Are you... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Shree is not a twat. No. Shree is amazing. He's obsessed by this girl. He's, he's obsessed by Noreen. He's, Noreen. He's in the same house as her, as he's obsessed by her, so it's coming really handy. It's yeah. a stalker's paradise. <laughs> <It is. laughs> Was he stalking her before... <laughs> Before the show, I mean that's incredibly lucky. Yeah. If, you're, if you're stalking someone and you both end up in the Big Brother house. <laughs> hey, Lisa, the lesbian lady. Is she a lesbian? Yeah, the she one is. with the Mohican. Yeah, and the big. She'd be sat there. She'd be sat there like this. She'd be sat there like this. Sat... Don't get me wrong, you know, with that girls allowed. Do you know what I mean? I mean, I'd, I'd maybe do them, but I'm like, I wouldn't do the ginger one, but I'd do the rest. I thought none of them gonna have sex with you. You dirty great lesbian. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> You'd be lucky to have sex with the ginger one! James, are you watching Big Brother? I don't actually watch reality TV. I think it's... I think it's crass to be honest with you. I think when you, when you see these people who will just, you know, lower their standards to go on... <laughs> to try and... On, on, on the off chance... On the off get chance... the irony? Did you get it? <laughs> I'm serious. On the off chance that they might get, you know, tapped up to go on some poxy Channel 4 show late at night on a Friday... <laughs> 
probably got to be uh, will Gordon Brown still be in a job in the next week or so he's obviously got to be very worried I'd be very worried if I had Hugh Edwards doing the news from outside my house <laughs> <laughs> I think if you look outside your window and you see Hugh Edwards going welcome to the 10 o'clock news you've got to think Christ what have I done <laughs> There's a brilliant picture of him this week. No, have, you got, have you got a picture? Oh, yeah, of I've got the, the picture of him being held on the chin. And it's very interesting oh, because he's the, he's the Prime Minister. <laughs> Someone's just reached out and... I mean, if that was Obama, they'd be mincemeat by now. <laughs> he, doesn't, he doesn't even stop him. I reckon you could walk up to Gordon Brown, pull his trousers open and pour custard down there. <laughs> and after about a minute, the, the special services would go, actually, that's enough custard. <laughs> He is the Prime Minister. He's coming out on his shoes, for Christ's sake. <laughs> a bit of respect. Jason, do you think Gordon Brown is doomed? I think the Labour Party, in general, won't... won't well, they'll be here, but they won't be in power, I think. It's, I mean, now the, all the MPs are in this uh, ring roll of... They're terrifying, aren't they? And, and, and they're calling it expenses scandal. But let's call it what it is. It's theft, isn't it? That's what it is, theft. If we did it in our job, you know, we'd... we'd, we'd I've taken a few of your suits home over the past few weeks. <laughs> you know, I dressed my wife in them. <laughs> uh, one good thing that comes out of this, if you're walking down the street and you see an MP with a Kit Kat, you're entitled to just go off and break off a bit. I've <laughs> 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 yeah. for this. Yeah, yeah. 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 better with a pepper army, because you can bend it over. And, <laughs> <laughs> and then go, <laughs> too hot. Taking anyone's personal money? Yes, ours. Yeah, ours. <laughs> <was. laughs> what have the nation been talking about? Have you been watching a bit of the Britain's Got Talent? It's be Britain's Subo. Got Talent. Subo. Subo, she's gone mad. <laughs> Turned up at some singing do. Yes. <laughs> Thrown some water. Tried to snog a cock. <laughs> Shot with loads of abuse. And only now does it come to light that she's Scottish. <laughs> Have these people never been on National Express? <laughs> There's fucking loads of them. <laughs> Moon River! <laughs> you shouldn't knock her, though, cos also one of the things about... The reason Obama likes her so much is she's a very important weapon in the war against terror. Because young extremists are now thinking twice about blowing themselves up now they know what a virgin really looks like. <laughs> <laughs> They're going... <laughs> She's got some huge fans, though, cos... Uh, and you'll appreciate this is a Twitterer, yeah, Jimmy. Uh, Demi Moore has been Twittering her support all through this, saying how much she likes her. And I think that's cos Demi Moore is smart. Because she's thinking, you know, when the looks go, I'll be able to play her in a movie. <laughs> they are actually doing a movie of her, though, aren't they? Of Susan Boyle's life. And yes, I'm... and I'm gonna play her! <laughs> 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 uh, Madonna's been at it again. She's adopted um, another child, which is uh, fantastic news for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> if I could get adopted, I would get adopted by Billy Bragg. That's like my dream person to adopt me. If he's out there, just. Do you I'm, have? I'm like no trouble. Yeah, I've got parents. They're great. Right. Will oh. they be watching this? <laughs> going, what? We haven't written enough protest songs. What do you want, love? <laughs> I would choose uh, Adam Woodyatt. I don't, wow, people He's have my favourite this... celebrity. I interviewed him once. He's number one, smiley. Number two, charming. This, this is Ian Beale we're talking yeah. about here. <laughs> number three. She wants Ian Beale to be her dad. <laughs> <laughs> he just seems he's very friendly. <laughs> They're slagging Madonna off in the paper, like, but she's going to make this this child's life yeah. better. I mean, I'm from yeah. Manchester and I'm doing all right for myself, but even she would make my life better, you know. So. <laughs> Yeah, if Madonna offered to adopt me, even at this point, I'd consider it. I'd say so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> She's probably got things like a jacuzzi. <laughs> Let's have a look and see whether Madonna adopting a baby was one of the most talked about things this week. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, this is the story that Madonna has adopted a second Malawian child. Already, Madonna's visit has passed into Malawian legend, specifically the legend of the scrawny witch that swoops down from the skies and steals children. <laughs> No, no offence to any witches that we have in the audience. We might, if we had any witches, I apologise. Anyone had green hair? <laughs> so, for example, that one there. <laughs> I'm just... 